What's up guys, Morse here bring out a brand new episode of Washington Station, the best station for Washington Football Nation. Now I haven't uploaded a video in three weeks because I am back at college and in the film school I'm in, it's very time consuming and I just want to put all my focus in that for the start off and didn't really want to have anything to distract me. But now, settled in, getting ready to really get to work in the film program, so getting to work putting the camera for that, so let's get back to the camera for YouTube and the season starting so we got to come back for Washington Station now doesn't it feel so good to have NFL back on TV and what better way to start the season than with a Cowboys loss the heartbreak loss of Tom, Br Tom Brady handing them the L you hate to see it don't you you never hate to see it you love to see it seeing Dak and Zeke well you know you actually feel bad for Zeke because he never really got the ball you know, he's getting paid millions of dollars to stand there and look pretty. So, I mean, I guess it's a win. Depends on how you're looking at it. But poor Dak. You know, I actually felt bad for him a little bit last night, how many times he had to throw it. But at the same time, you had to throw it that many times, you're likely not going to win a game. So, keep throwing Dak. You're doing great. But, yeah, it was great seeing Tom Brady. You never leave Tom Brady with a minute and a half left, even the announcers knew. You don't leave Tom Brady with that much time left in the game because you're just going to suffer. But we're not here to talk about Tampa Bay or Dallas, at least not yet. We'll talk about them both at some point this year. But it's time to talk about the Chargers. Week 1 at home, 1 o'clock. Our kickoff is finally here. All the months of training and preparation and where will we pick up after our playoff appearance last season. And we're here. And breaking news, right before I recorded this video, Curtis Samuel has been placed on IR, so he will not be starting this week. But it's short-term IR, which I think is three or four weeks. So he'll be back um, after the season gets going. So, But it's just a precaution thing for him. He had COVID, so it's a setback for him, which set back his recovery. And so it's giving him more time to rest and really heal that groin injury. Because we, we're so, we have so much depth for the first time in a long time at receiver that we feel comfortable letting him rest and having some of the new guys play his position, like De'Ami Brown, Cam Sims, Adam Humphreys, um, and Dax from uh, the rookie Dax. I don't know how to say his last name, so I'm not going to. But what are we facing this week? We are facing a Chargers team that just missed the playoffs last season and has a lot of potential on their roster, leading by their leading captain, Justin Herbert, the guy who's taken the NFL by storm, reigning offensive rookie of the year. He played great at the end of last season. Just struggled with the position the team was already in and the injuries the team was going through, um, especially on their defensive side, really set that team back. But this year, they're fully healthy. Not exactly. Um, the starting running back, Austin Eckler, did not practice this week. I don't know what his uh, status is for Sunday, but let's hope it's out. But even if he is out, the backup, Justin Jackson, who I believe was a rookie last year, will get to start. And he actually put up some numbers last year. So it's not just um, a breath of fresh air if Austin Eckler can't play. It's Justin Jackson. is just as skilled. He can run the ball really good. But luckily, I think our run defense is our strongest thing right now. So I'm not too worried whoever's getting the handoff. But also, they got some really good receivers. They got veteran tight end Jared Cook. Been in NFL for a long time. Solid tight end. They also have Mike Williams and uh, Keenan Allen starting at receiver. It's a dangerous duo, especially Keenan Allen, one of the best receivers in the league since he got drafted. And Mike Williams, one of his big body receivers that no one really wants to go one-on-one -on, -one on because he can moss you. He's very much, he and Cam Sims very much play the same style um, position. And on the defensive side, they have a pretty good defense led up front with uh, Linval Joseph at nose tackle and Joey Bosa at defensive end. Those two are monstrous players, especially Joey Bosa, one of the best defensive players in the league, hands down. So he's going to be a struggle for our O-line, which is new and kind of inexperienced and just young and really getting their feet wet and really playing for the first time all together. And so they're going to be facing a, a big front from the Chargers. And in the back end of the defense, you know they got Derwin James, who missed all of last season, but he is back in this season and... He's one of the best to do it when he's in the league. Very much a very hard-hitting safety, kind of like Landon Collins. And 
They got on the outside Chris Harris Jr., who's probably on the back end of his career, but is still a high-level player. Uh, hasn't been the same since he left Denver, but he's still very good. But you know what? That's the Chargers. Like I said, they're picking up after after a semi-decent ending to their season, minus missing the playoffs, with the new head coach, so an experienced head coach. So I think while they're powerful in some ways, I think we'll handle them easy peasy because our team, for the most part, is generally the same team from last season with a few new pieces in and out, new quarterback, which is obviously a big piece, but especially for the defense, for the, except for like Jamin Davis and who else? William Jackson and Benjamin St. Juice, everyone else is the same. We got Landon Collins back from injury, Matt Ionide is back from injury, John Allen, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, all coming at you from the front. That line can't handle them, let's be honest. And on the offensive side, led by Ryan Fitzpatrick, of course, we have Antonio Gibson, who looks to be fully healthy from his uh, turf toe injury. And we got J.D. McKissick at third down back. And our O-line with Charles Leno, Wes Schweitzer, Chase Roulier, Brandon Scherf, and Sam Cosme. You know, they're they're young. Sam especially, he's very young. He's kind of had a rough camp. and But he's progressed very well throughout the year. So I think he can – he's going to have his hands full with Joey Boso because they're going to put Joey on which side they think is best. And Charles Leno is experienced better, and he's been one of the top tackles in the league at times. Sam is a rookie. He hasn't experienced it yet. He's experienced Chase Young and Montez Sweat, but that's in practice. You can practice all you want. That does not prepare you for game time. So he's really going to get that uh, welcome to the NFL experience, which is good for him. That's what you want for your rookie. And at tight end, of course, we got Logan Thomas, who has had a standout season last season, and uh, back up with John Bates, the rookie. And at receiver, we got Terry McLaurin, the best receiver in the league. I might be a little biased, but you know what? People will be saying that as the year goes on. And we got Cam Sims and Deami Brown, who I'm really excited for everyone to see. He, he looked great in camp, and he's looked great in the sparks we've seen in the preseason. So I'm excited to see him get going. Uh, and Adam Humphreys. And there's another receiver. That's name is uh, DeAndre Carter. And I feel like there's another one that's just escaping my mind at the moment. Uh, I'm used to saying Steven Sims, but he's gone. And, you know, I hope for Gandy Golden to make the roster, but he didn't. He made practice squad, so he's still there, which is awesome, which is enough for me, just as he's on the team. And our defense, you know, I've mentioned some names. I mentioned the front, but the linebackers, in addition to Jamin Davis, Cole Holcomb, and John Bosick. John Bosick, captain this year, so good for him. And uh, safety is led by Cameron Curl and Landy Collins. And don't forget about Bobby McCain, who's right behind Cameron Curl. Very solid safety. And got some very solid rookies with Shaka Tony, William Bradley King, James Smith Williams. These guys, um, high level players that I think can really produce well for the team and as deaf players. And it's sad to see Jimmy Moreland go. A shocker move. But uh, Troy McIntyre, or McIntyre, I can't remember how you say his name. But he really impressed in camp. Tory Apke, that son of a gun. I didn't think he was going to make the team. I didn't want him to make the team. But he's on the team, so we just had to live with it. But this is a team, we don't exactly know how the offense is going to go. You know, Ryan Fitzpatrick wants to sling it. But Gibson is such a powerful runner. I think we're going to have a good mix. I think Scott Turner is going to start out slow and just build the pace. We want to kind of, I think... For this game, Dustin Herbert can really sling it. So what you want to do, and Ryan can too, but just like us, the Chargers have many weapons. So I believe you want to start slow and drain the clock with Gibb and J.D. and Jared Patterson. Just hand them all the ball. Let them all get touches with it. You know, Just let them all just shove it up the middle. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what the team really needs to do to really get them – game going get the tempo going and then introduce the pass and get terry involved and logan involved and cam involved get all of them involved early you run early and then introduce the pass every few plays and just really keep the defense on their feet and not know what we're going to do that's what problem with dallas was last night tampa didn't really need to defend a run because they knew they weren't going to run it we need to make sure the defense is on their feet and never lets off 
And for the defense, the front's got to do what they got to do. They There's nothing really you got to talk about with them. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, they line up, strike fear in the Chargers O-line, and go after Justin Herbert. It's very easy, self-explanatory. They'll get it done. Uh, the corners really need to uh, play back because I feel like they're going to want to go deep with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Jared Cook's probably going to play more of the short to mid-range routes, but they're really going to try to have him in the middle to open up the back for Keenan and Mike. So we just have to make sure Cameron Curl and Landon Collins. Landon Collins, I would say, play more up in the middle, but let Cameron Curl run back and try to defend the deep pass because they're going to. I have a really strong feeling that Justin Herbert's going to go slinging it because he slung it last season. It looked good. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So that's how I think the game is good. I think we just had a slow tempo to start running the ball, introduce the pass sparingly, and then really get heavy with the pass. I'd say maybe a second quarter and parts in the third quarter. I think we win this game. I think it'll be a decently close game. I say we win by maybe five points or more. Uh, I don't give final score predictions, but if but that's what I'll say. I think we'll win by five points at least. And, yeah, so I'm excited to have Washington football back for the first time. Washington football team, no new name yet, coming in the first quarter next year when the team turns 90 years old. And let's get it. Ron Rivera healthy this year. And we're almost we're getting back at some rate, so it's good to hear that the players are taking the initiative so everything runs more smoothly this year. And, yeah, so I'll talk to you all next week after this game. We'll talk about this game and preview our next game, which is, I believe, against the Giants on Thursday night maybe. I can't remember exactly. I think it's a primetime. I know it's a primetime game, and I think it's next week. So we'll talk about that. And I'm back making YouTube videos regularly, at least one or two a week. And um, it won't be like last season where it was just Washington Station for three months. It'll be different types of videos throughout. So it's not the same type of video to really diversify the content. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that bell button down below so you are notified every single time I upload a brand new video to the station. And I'm a Morris and I'm out. Let's get it. Washington football team. Peace.